guys, Two Green 7 here, and over the years I've chronicled the origins and etymology of gym leaders, starter Pokemon, champions, and the Elite Four members, but I forgot about the most important characters of all, you and me. Well, both of us, really. I'm talking about the player character, our avatars, the protagonists, and the hero of our story. The trainers we played as over the years are actually very interesting, but since we tend to become them, we forget about their official names and a ton of cool facts that we should know about. After all, who do you know more than yourself? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the cool facts about the Pokemon protagonists of all main series Pokemon games. Now I want to begin with Lucas, is what an idiot would say. Let's obviously start with Red, the original Pokemon trainer and the protagonist with the most in-game appearances. He shows his handsome face in every generation except for Gen 6. His character can be seen in early Pokemon concept art, back when the franchise was to be named Capsule Monsters. Red's profile sprite in red and green even resembles a combination of Red's Capsule Monster and Final Design, suggesting the possibility that his official design was finalized later on, or just that this sprite was made during early development. While Ash is called Satoshi in Japan, named after the creator of Pokemon, Red was also originally named Satoshi in promotional material. Red's name comes from the color, but you can find a ton of wacky default names that you can give Red and his rival like Nintendo and Sony, or you can just name him Cool Guy and Buttface. As Red aged, he would acquire a team that blatantly references the previous game's events and even the anime. In Heart Gold and Soul Silver, he has a Charizard, Venusaur, and Blastoise for obvious reasons, a Pikachu that has the same moves that Ash's Pikachu had in Gen 4. It's also pretty underrated how his Pikachu is the highest level Pokemon owned by any non-battle facility Pokemon in the franchise. Red also has a Lapras that he most probably got from the Silphco, which was an Espeon in the original, also known as the Eevee the player gets in Celadon City, and a Snorlax, which is a mandatory encounter. His team, apart from Venusaur and Blastoise being fully evolved, is pretty much identical to Ash's team during the Orange Islands arc. So while Ash is based on Red, they both contribute to each other in various ways. But unlike Ash, Red grew up. He's actually the only protagonist to be seen as an adult, and even wears a cool shirt that I wish I had, which carries the number 96, referring to the year Pokemon Red and Green were released and the year I was born. I never existed in a world without Pokemon. I am pure. Unlike Red, his female counterpart, Leaf, doesn't have an official name, but Leaf is the name she is without a doubt referred to as the most. A minute amount of fans call her Blue or Green, like her Pokemon Adventures counterpart, but in Japan, she is sometimes referred to as Fuguri, half of the katakana for Leaf Green, Leaf Fugurin. Ethan, originally called Gold, is the protagonist of Gold and Silver. From here on, considering the protagonists almost always show up in the game as opposite gendered NPCs, we're fully aware of the names officially given to the protagonists. All of his official names refer to music or some kind of instrument. His Japanese name, Hibiki, means sound or echo, while his English name, Ethan, comes from the Hebrew Eitan, meaning firm and strong, but can also refer to a musician that King David had in his court. Ethan makes a cameo in the anime, but also has another anime counterpart in Jimmy. Ethan's actually the only male protagonist to have two female counterparts. He was originally complimented by Chris, the first female player character in the Pokemon main games. Her name is an abbreviation of Crystal, the version she debuted in. Earlier designs for a female player character looked like this. Chris even had an anime counterpart in Marina, who has a few nice easter egg appearances in the Diamond and Pearl anime before Heart Gold and Soul Silver were even announced, you know, the game she was replaced in, by Lyra herself. Her name is derived from the lyre, this instrument right here, and her Japanese name, kotone, means the sound of a koto, this lovely Japanese instrument, which you could hear in some Johto tracks. Gen 3 gave us a cool new pair of protagonists, one of which was constantly mistaken to have white hair. Ruby and Sapphire were actually the first games in which the player character whom you did not choose became a relevant NPC and showed up throughout your journey. They're also the first and only protagonists with two parents present in the game, not to mention their fathers being really important to the story, since the protagonist's father is the gym leader, Norman, while the opposite character's father is Professor Birch. This aspect could have been inspiration for Brendan's English name. Brendan is an Irish name that can be traced back to mean prince. With an important father figure, it makes sense. His Japanese name matches too. You see, Brendan may be chosen because it sounds like bravery, which is what his Japanese name, Yuki, translates to. Yuki without an accent mark is also a Japanese word for snow, which contrasts with May's Japanese name, Haruka, meaning spring blossom, which blooms in the season that the month of May takes place in. These weather-oriented names make the most sense ever. They, they make all of the sense, considering the theme of this game's legendary trio and even the theme of the game itself. 
It's interesting to note that these two characters are wearing sports clothes, apparel that will help them journey through a variety of weather and terrain, which the Hoenn region does supply. Their default names are also pretty noticeable puns on land and sea, like Landon, Sean, Terry, Terra, Marina, and in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Orlando for Omega, and Anna for Alpha. May also has the privilege of being the first protagonist to become a main character in the anime, not to mention the first protagonist to go through a ton of character development. And Don kept that development going. We're also on a roll with the parental roles, since in this generation, our mother finally has a name, Joanna. In Gen 4, Don and Lucas were our heroes, and their names are pretty clever. Both their names in all languages refer to bright light. Lucas comes from Lucis, the Latin root word for light, and Don literally refers to the first appearance of light during sunrise. Lucas's Japanese name, Koki, means brightness and even shares syllables with the Japanese word for diamond, while Don is Hikari in Japanese, which literally means light. This is even more clever task considering Cyrus and Cynthia's names throughout most languages refer to the sun, moon, white, and sources of light in general. Don also shares the spot with Leaf as the shortest and youngest protagonist in the series, at age 11. This definitely contrasts with the protagonists of Gen 5, who get a significant age boost and were the first player characters designed as teenagers. Originally, they were planned to be 16 in black and white, but were aged down to 14. That's official, by the way. I had to translate an entire Japanese interview to confirm it. These teenage protagonists make more sense, because here in New York, the the city Unova is based on, we don't let kids go on journeys. Both black and white protagonists have names that reference battles and fighting in every language, like their Japanese names Toya and Toko. Hilbert is a variation of Hildbert, which is Germanic for bright battle. Hilda comes from the German word for battle as well, though both were given names that refer to black and white in the demos instead. Considering Gem 5 was almost like a soft reboot of the franchise, it's interesting to note how Hilbert does resemble Red more than any other protagonist. Now since Unova was the only region we were able to start a journey in with two different pairs of protagonists, we get to talk about Nate and Rosa, or should I shatter the patriarchy and say Rosa and Nate? Rosa and Nate. Rosa Nate. Rosa Nate. Resonate. Resonate! <laughs> a word associated with echoes. A funny pun considering we get a similar repeating journey through Unova. One that echoes the previous one. Their Japanese names actually made the clever pun first, since Kyohei and Mei can be combined to make the Japanese word for resonate, Kyomei. These are actually the first protagonists to be seen in various apparel, which gave us a little taste of what was to come in Generation 6. In Kalos, we got to play as the tallest protagonists in the series, and what I assume are the oldest as well. Serena and Kalem, which sound like Serene and Calm, are a good choice considering Kalos's tranquil locations. Their demo names are Xavier and Yvonne, you know, X and Y. Pretty funny. <laughs> Fun fact, Serena is the only officially blonde protagonist, which makes sense since five of the protagonist pairs are native to Japanese-based regions. And while Gen 5 and 6 allowed us to play as older characters, Sun and Moon and their sister games unfortunately made us adult fans play as 11-year-olds again. Now this boy has been named Sun in the demo, Ray in the Ultra Sun and Moon pre-release material, Kai which means ocean in unused data, but is almost certainly believed to be named Elio, after Helios, the Greek personification of the sun. This educated guess is due to the fact that it's the counterpart name to Selene, the name given to the female protagonist in her official merchandise. And in Greek mythology, Selene is the goddess of the moon. Her official Japanese name is Mizuki, which means beautiful moon or even a pun on water moon. Lana, Hawaiian for afloat, is an unused name found within the data, but considering Lana is already a character we all know and love, you can never refer to Selene as Lana. But I think it's impressive how long I waited to mention the fact that these are finally the first protagonists to have the ability to not wear headgear. And to the naysayers, yes, these are the same people. They're just wearing new clothes and sporting new hairstyles. It's not the first time we've seen this in a Pokemon game. And let's end it off with a cute little thing I noticed. The protagonists, in Sun and Moon at least, start out with clothes that share colors with the starters. Look at these Rowlet shorts, Litten shoes and pants, and Poplio shirt and shoes. Their Ultra designs are pretty chic as well. We got some mighty fine protagonists over the years, but don't forget that they're only as awesome as you are. So go out there and do awesome things, like giving this video a like and subscribing if you haven't. It's very important that you follow me on Facebook and Twitter too. And check the description for some t-shirts I made and a link to my Patreon which boasts some cool rewards. I'll see you guys very soon.